In this fifth episode of the Spring Boot Kotlin series, we are going to take a look at Timeleaf, which is the template engine for Spring Boot. We are going to render a list of records from Kotlin as a table in HTML. In case you don't know what a template engine does, so whenever we are developing a web server that returns HTML pages, the template engine will help us build the actual HTML starting from data structures in Kotlin or in Java. If our web server is returning an API, then we don't need a template engine. As usual, the source code will be linked in the video description below. We are going to start by opening the Spring Initializer. And uh, we're going to initialize a new project. So in here, we select the Gradle, Kotlin, the latest uh, stable Spring Boot version 2.7.5 in my case. And we're going to give a name to our artifact. Let's call it Boot 5 because it's the fifth video in our series. And for dependencies, we need to add web because we we are building a web server. We also need to add time leaf for this uh, specific template engine. And as usual, we add uh, Spring Boot Dev Tools for hot swapping. It makes development much easier. So now we can just generate this file and it will prompt us to download it in, in a directory like that. Now we can extract this file. And um, now, now we can open it in uh, IntelliJ. And uh, I will use uh, IntelliJ Ultimate Edition for uh, this project. And that is because the IntelliJ Community Edition unfortunately doesn't have Timeleaf um, support because uh, IntelliJ needs to make money somehow and that this is where they uh, drew the line unfortunately. So you you can still you can still run it, but you won't get um you won't get autocomplete for time leave. You you can still use community edition. So now it will um we open the directory we just extracted in IntelliJ, and it will take um, a minute or two for the for IntelliJ to index all our uh, source file and download dependencies and so on. I will skip ahead in the video. Now that our project finished being indexed, we can uh, continue by adding our first template. So the templates need to be placed inside source, main, and resources templates. And we will do add new HTML file, and uh, we are going to call it index.html. Let's give it a title, main page. And in here, we're going to add a paragraph saying uh, hello world for now. So now this needs to be linked to a controller also in our project. So we'll go to the Kotlin, source main Kotlin. And in here, we're going to add a new Kotlin class. Let's call it main controller. And um, in, in here, uh, we need to add a function. Let's call it function index. So this one will have a get mapping. So the path for um, for this page will be the root uh, the root of of our uh, web server. So just slash. Also, our controller needs to have the controller annotation for Spring Boot. So in here, if um, if our function uh, if our controller function returns a, a string then uh, Spring Boot will um, convert this um, this into a template. So we, we see that our function index is returning this index template. And then what Spring Boot will uh, do, it will go into the templates and find the template with index.html, which matches this uh, string that we are returning, and then render that template in, uh, in the browser. So if we start this project, so our server is running on port 8080. So if we go to localhost 8080, localhost 8080, we see that uh, our template uh, worked successfully. 
this was not the most impressive template and uh, the next step will be to actually transfer data from um, from Kotlin to the HTML. And uh, let's say we want to customize this message instead of hello world to say hello and then our name. So in uh, in our uh, Kotlin controller, we need to add this argument to our function uh, called model. So it is from uh, Spring Framework UI model, that one. And now inside the model, we need to add, uh, we can add attributes. So the attributes will have uh, a name and a value. And um, the attribute name will be name in our case, and the value would be Vlad. And uh, these, uh, this attribute will be transferred to, uh, to our template. But in order to use it, we need to add an, we, we need to add the time leaf namespace, namespace to, um, to our HTML. So in here we can do XML namespace, then we give a prefix to we give a short code to our namespace. And uh, the namespace for time leaf is HTTP slash slash, then time leaf dot org like that and um, now this allows us to in uh, inside the inside the paragraph to use uh, it, it gives us access to, to this time leaf operation so the one that we are going to use is time leaf text so in here we can use the uh, the variable that we send from our controller in our in our case name so now we no longer need um, we no longer need the hello world text. So now if we just build, rebuild our project, we do build module. So hot swapping will um, reload the code that we changed. So if we refresh our page now, it will uh, just say Vlad. And if we want to add the, the part with the hello, which was a static part, we need to build a string in here. So it will be hello in a single quotes this time. And then we use the string uh, concatenation operator plus. And then we add our name. So now if we rebuild again the project and we refresh in the browser, it it uh, says, uh, hello, Vlad. Next, we will see how we can uh, render more uh, structured data as uh, HTML. And for this, we will, um, for this use case, we will render a list of products as a table. So we'll create a, we'll create a new data class in our controller called product. And uh, this will have two fields, uh, let's say name, product name, which is a string. And uh, then it will be price as in uh, int. So now in our model, also we are going to add a new attribute, and this one will be products. And for now, we're just going to return a static list of products. Of course, in a real world example, maybe you load these products from a database or somewhere else. But for now, this will uh, do. So let's say. We want, we have Apple, which is, uh, let's say $3. Then we have uh, a strawberry. A strawberry is uh, $5. And uh, let's say potato, potato is uh, $1. And uh, so now inside the, our template, we, as we said, we create a new table. And uh, first we were going to add the table headers. So let's say product name. And then uh, also another header price in dollars. Okay, so now, now we need to take the, um, take all the products that we have as a list and create create a new table row for each product. So the way we do this is we, we add the table row entry that we want. And then 
for iteration, we have uh, th for time leaf and um, each. The format of um, this operator is uh, the iterator name in our case is item, but we can name this however we want. And then the variable in which we are iterating through, and in our case product. So this one, this uh, variable name here needs to match the attribute that we set from our controller. So this one, it, it would be equivalent for something like for item in product in, in a pseudo code. So we create uh, rows for each uh, pro each item and product and now we can just do a table cell and in here we will use uh, again th text but now we can use item dot and um, here uh, we we access the attributes we set in our data class so first we set the name and then we set the price so in here it will be item that name so this one is the first table cell in our row and the second table cell it will be th text and this one item that price so of course if we rename this item to something else everything in these two table cells needs to change so now if we rebuild our project okay so if we reload our um, our web page we see that we what um, our data is rendered as a table like we expected. And lastly for this video, we are going to see how we can add uh, CSS to our templates. The same technique can be used for adding JavaScript. And uh, for illustrating this, we are going to add uh, borders to our table because by default, HTML tables don't have borders. So if we go to our project, in, uh, in here in source main resources, there's this directory static, and this is where we need to add our CSS. So we are going to add a new um, style sheet file CSS. Let's call it main.css. And in here, the style that we need to add is uh, for table, table cell and table header. We are going to add a border, let's say one pixel solid black. And we are also going to add border collapse, collapse. So we save this CSS file and then we go to our template. So to index.html and inside the header, we need to add a new link. And um, we have this property called th.ref, h-r-e-f. The format is uh, at, and then between uh, curly brackets, curly braces, we add the name of our um, resource that we want to include, in our case, main.css. And also, m we need to add the rel um, attribute for uh, style sheets. So we save, uh, we save the changes to our template. And now, if we rebuild our, our project, Let's see. Okay, so it, it worked uh, just like we expected. This is all the material for this video. Timeleaf is a broad subject and uh, this video was just meant to be an introduction to it. If you are interested in uh, Spring Boot videos, there should be more showing up on the screen. And if you want to support the channel, please like the video or uh, consider subscribing. Thank you.